Like, I think what I need to do is take my phone out, and when we do our next commercial break, I'm going to record it so they can see how it works. <laughs> But all right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Game number one in a brand new best of five. And this is the winner's match for the Ting Open Season 2 Wildcard Group. Make sure to check out bttv.ting.com and claim $25 in credit. You can either use it to test out their phone services for basically free or use it to buy anything in their store for cheap. They've got phones, they've got SIM cards, they've got everything you could hope for. Make sure to check it out. Once again, bttv.ting.com. We're shooting for 40 people to either buy stuff or sign up for Ting. All of these things lead towards us getting another season, hopefully and ideally later on down the road. In the bottom right side of Frozen Temple, though, we've got the Red Protoss playing for my insanity. It's going to be Drogo. In the top left as the blue Zerg, he is Samsung Galaxy's Solar. All right, so I think coming into this, it's without a doubt in my mind. You know, you've got the Korean versus the foreigner element. You got Solar versus Drogo. So much of this screams Solar, but I'm actually gonna defy that. I'm gonna say Drogo. I think Drogo takes us three one. I'll even say, because Drogo's oh. PVZ has looked pretty darn good the last few times we've cast them. I don't know about that. I will do the opposite score to make things interesting, even though we're not betting anything well you sold me five dollars from something from Are you sure? one of these we shitty did... bets we did <laughs> so do you want to bet five bucks and basically no. double or nothing wait the last time we bet five dollars wait i don't remember the last time we bet five dollars i think we bet nothing last time we bet <laughs> i don't remember what it was. we oftentimes bet nothing can can chad just keep a record of how long we how many times we bet against each other we're bad like, gamblers we're bad and, gamblers and is what it comes down to yeah. Um, well, anyway, I, I think Solar takes us 3-1 still. Drogo might have really good PDZ, but Solar, I don't think this is where the Zergs uh, or Korean Zergs are having as much of a problem. Actually, real quick, what server is this on? That could be an influencing factor. Central, probably. Uh, there you go. The buttons are different in Overwatch and StarCraft to bring up that command. It's really annoying, but yeah, it's Eastern, actually, so... First game going to be a little bit advantageous to Drogo, but we'll see if that's a problem for Solar or not. He may not. He may have good enough internet for it to not really be that big of a factor. Hashtag Korea. Huh. I just, uh, I must have changed it last time we did this particular format or something. Because usually it is just default central. Well, anyway, the Twilight Council on the way for Drogo is coming down pretty early and kind of hidden in the back there, so it's a little far away. Uh, Resident Glaives is going to start up. I mean, a Dark Shrine also could have been cool to see, but the Resident Glaives, the Adept Attacks, they've been working out really well for a lot of Protosses. I mean, I, I'm, oh. I'm really digging the all-ins. <laughs> That's the only time you ever hear me say that, right? But, like, I'm actually really digging the all-ins that come out of Adepts, and especially Protoss in general. And if Drogo's thinking about doing that on Preston Temple, it's weird to see this without the priority on, uh, on a Robo coming down so quick. But oh, he's got the money mm -hmm. for it. There's the two gateways so for the links to get cleaned up, maybe. Yeah, unfortunately now it's still not like super duper suspicious. This could just be three gate, you know, attack. But as you said, no robo. I don't wear war prism, but the gas is the natural something that Solar can't easily scout, and uh, he could be a little scared. It is just the two gateways though. Um, yeah. There's so no this... proxy pylon out on the map for like a fourth gateway or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, we would have been at the point where the Robo would have been finishing up by now if this was timed out well for a big all-in. So, just production for the time being. Now, that's, again, still not such a bad thing. Adepts look pretty silly when they get a big enough number, and if you just keep producing three at a time, three at a time, three at a time, and don't mess those cooldowns, you'll have a really sizable army back at home. Mm -hmm. The Bailing Nest comes down out of Solar because he wants to play it safe, and I don't think it's too risky, so I really enjoy this choice. But, as you pointed out, as we've seen, good Adept splitting and control beats out Bailings, like, nine times out of ten. Yeah. On the defensive, but for whatever reason, offensive ling surrounds go down. I yeah. guess the, the banelings are a surprise instead of being pre-scouted with shades, and they actually do very well. So Solar trying to deny the third base, that actually might still go very well. Um, again, if the shades get any you know advanced notice, maybe then Drogo's splits are pretty good, or he goes back home to the Sim City. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. He might be able to split up you know two in each base, and then just force Solar to really waste time cleaning everything up. He will go ahead and shade all of his adepts to one place, and we'll scout those banelings. I'm surprised he actually went through with that. I was just going to cancel and go back towards the third instead, but 
Several of these adepts get surrounded. The priority has to go on the ones killing the drones, so quickly swaps the ones that were trapped. But Solar is cleaning this up. Uh, second round of the adepts going to come over here to the third base. There we go. Not necessarily worth their cost yet, though. I mean, Drogo's gotten quite a few kills here, but mm. hardly efficient. I want to say in time bot, maybe it's okay, but I've been like watching the production tab, and I don't really think that it's bought like super. Like, it hasn't bought more than two warpins. I think another warpin is about to come off cooldown, but there's no like cannons, there's not like so many pylons, there's not so much SimCity. I, I don't know if this was enough for losing all of those Ooh. adepts. This is a very strong attack here from Solar. That force field really clutched in the walls. I was about to bust right on through. Pylon's going to come down behind this. I mean, the cyber core possibly forfeit. I don't know. We'll find out in a second here as the Banelings get really close to it. Left side, force fields go down once again. And Drogo is clutching uh -oh. it when it comes to fighting these Banelings. But these are such volatile things that could just end the game in one harsh explosion. Mm, looks like they're not going to end the game, though. Left like, side. Like, they're going to oh, get some damage done. Left side like, holds really well. Right side, not so much. Natural okay, base okay. in a lot of trouble. Probe's getting pulled. 24 go down, and the Nexus may die with this. It sucks because Drogo's defense on the left side was perfect. Yeah, it was the right side that was finally broken. It was very worrying for Solar for a while. Like, only 7 probe kills was not good. 30 probe kills, so much better. And that does warrant Solar's, you know, he started droning. He didn't actually follow this up with very much, and now he's trying to get his tech up, too. Drogo doesn't have as many probes as he would like right now. He also doesn't have that big of an army to even counterattack with, or the production. Oh, uh, yeah. So, I think Solar is pretty pretty well off here. It's the one thing you have to be scared of, is a counterattack, but only with Blink Stalkers, even if it was going to happen, it's not super scary. More Banley's just going to get morphed into the side. Drogo has not actually replaced this wall fully yet. Cybercore goes back down the front lines. Questionable, because of course, you've already lost that once. This is a big stall out on Adepts. You're going for Blink. You can't build Stalkers. All of a sudden, this is a huge problem. But I don't think the Cyber Corps is going to get to finish before the next fight comes down. That's a lot of Banelings. Mm, it's surprising to see Solar. I, I don't know if he's really planning on busting through a wall here. But he has a scout on it. So he can actually see, like, okay, I'm going to bust the pylon. I'm going to bust that Adept and go into the natural. I'm going to bust a nut. You know what? He could just bust the Cyberic score again. Can you not, by the way? Um, <laughs> and, and get rid of the Stalker Warpins. I wasn't sure if you caught that that delay. Of course I did. Uh, yeah, I agree, actually. I think taking on the Cyber Core would be really efficient use of these Banelings. But looking to get in there, he's a little bit tentative. He didn't know if there was Force Fields. So there weren't, of course, because he killed the Cyber Core from earlier. Those Banelings get wrecked. They don't actually do that much. But once again, they take out most of the Adepts. And then the Link's flooding in. On top of that pile, going to go down. He powers the cannon to go with it. Uh, I mean, there's so few links left. Killing that pylon wasn't yeah. devastating, but it was funny that he wanted to get it so so badly. This Solar's is... second bailing attack, not not a lot of damage. No, definitely not nearly as efficient as the first one. But this is where it gets questionable. If Solar makes another attack like that, and another attack like that, and he's just starting to take unfavorable trades, you can give away that lead you've locked down in the game. I mean, make no mistake. Four bases, all these drones. This was everything gained for Solar from that first attack. Hmm. Solar really looking very good in this game. I'm actually not sure how Drogo plans on bringing this back. He got a couple of... Well, he got one useless upgrade, I will say. The Blink Stalkers, they might be good against someone who's still like committing a lot to Ling Baneling, but now we also have Hydras on the way, and he just hasn't been yeah. able to start a Blink Stalker count. So, like, you know, 25 Blink Stalkers, a plus one, eh, okay, but four is not very useful. So he's still just warping into Depths. Um, which, again, this is not the complete Protoss army that you would want, around 10 minutes. This is just still gateway units that aren't in mass or super well upgraded. And this Hydra army might just be able to steamroll them. Mm. Edwin in chat says, oh my god, base for your I just got my part two for the mail. Thanks, Riff. Yo! Uh, thanks, me. <laughs> well, actually, no, that one might not be him, though. You don't know. Oh, I don't know. I, I'm not allowed to I just figure you haven't, sent, you haven't sent the part twos in like a month. Well, the ones I sent a month ago would be getting there right now. Really? Point it takes that long? Edway! Do me a favor, man. Take a picture and tweet it at us, pretty please. Now, as the army does come into the fight, the Banelings, once again, a huge threat in the side. Force field's not too bad to start, but there's not enough of them to cover everything. The Banelings roll right into the heart of that army. And despite blinking back, it's not going to be enough for Drogo. This first game is going to go to Solar. Yep. That corpse is just big. That's not cool, man. It's a dead body. Leave it alone. Do what he wants with it. 
Oh my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, why would you go there? That's, that's messed up. There's you who went there, madam. No? I just meant, like, hack it to death, not what you're thinking of. I'm hacking things. I need two keyboards. <laughs> All right. Uh, small break. We'll get to game number two. Thank you guys for watching as we continue on with the winner's match ASAP. Hmm, yeah. Everything, everyone can agree on one race being overpowered at some point in time. In the top left, as the red Protoss, he is T Drogo. What a dick move. Nah. <laughs> I think we see this more and more commonly uh, in general, but especially on Arena, where you can not only, you know, pile and block hatcheries and be super annoying, if they are doing an early pool, you can go ahead and pile and block the choke. So. The fact that he got here so early, he was able to block both hatcheries is very annoying. I mean, this is part of the reason that people started going for third bases automatically as their natural. They figured the pro would at least be like able to deny one, usually the natural, but not both. But it happened anyway. <laughs> Worker harass is stupid. Yeah, but I mean, starting off with another gateway and except an X core before throwing out Nexus, I mean, Solar will. Uh, more links. Um, Solar could have counterattacked, and maybe he would if he saw the Nexus be put down, because the Overlord's right there, obviously, but. If he's not going to use it to attack, I don't think that would be that bad either. The fact that Solar was denied two bases for a while, plants both of them down, sure, but you know, now we'd have to waste money on getting Lings. It'd also suck, but Drogo's still not getting a Nexus, still can afford a Nexus, as he did get those units. Um, I I don't know, is this really worth it for Drogo? <laughs> now it's gonna go down. It's true. Hmm. Yeah, this is what's kind of weird. Like, okay, you get maybe eight more lings to deal with double adepts, but then eight more lings on top of that? That's maybe a few too many? Hmm. Well, now he's up to a total of 12, which isn't, like, so much. And now he can start using all of his larvae that he's going to get, too, to produce a lot of drones. But Joga could get aggressive beyond this two-gate opener, you know? Okay, his Nexus finishes, he transferred whatever probes he can, and then he goes for another attack while Solar is still trying to get said drones up. Oh, or Solar could potentially send all of his lanes into the natural because it's not walled off and there's no probe down there to wall it off. Now he has to deal with... What? I, I can't believe Solar would actually, like, get a lot of kills. All these lanes... They felt defensive just because they figured there's no way they'd possibly get past Drogo's wall, but... Okay, now he's gonna try and wall it off. I've been muted. Son of a gun. Oh my god! It hasn't <laughs> happened in so long! <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, there really hasn't been anything too much to talk about this game. I talked about the pylons. Zombie kind of covered it, though, on her end. And... <laughs> Damn it. <sighs> You know, oh. I'll, hang on, I'm gonna check the user list. Is TLO watching? <laughs> He's streaming, man. No, but Mana is. So it's the Liquid Curse. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> no, uh, man, no, I feel. Ah, no. oh, I'm so mad. I mean, it's so good. No, you didn't make any really, like, astute observations this time. That yeah, you're, like, I was actually pretty choked about so that. In Ting Season 1, I actually would just gamble and make some really sick calls, and then there'd be no one to verify that I was right except for Zombie Grub. So, congrats. I impressed one person who didn't care whether I knew what I was doing or not. <laughs> like, there, there. There, there. Okay, well. The Baneling is coming down along with just, a, you know, more drones, so I guess he's not going to Baneling bust Drogo yet, but they'll certainly be useful if Joe Solar 
you need to defend, and if you decided to, like, less about the natural and more about the third, deny the third, he'll have, um, quite a lot of wings to do so. You know what I hate most this being muted thing? Because everyone tells you? Yeah, like, the second we saw it pop up on stream, my Skype lit up and went from, like, one unread message to fucking nine, and now I have, like, three new Twitter notifications. <laughs> I'm not even gonna look. I already know what they're gonna say. They're gonna say, Rifkin, you know you're muted? No, I have no idea, man. No clue at all. Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> oh. Stream delays well, the, the son of a day, bitch. One day everyone is just like, no, guys, he knows. No one say anything. Is the day that you're just gonna be like, what? Why didn't anyone tell me? Yeah, exactly, right? Uh, the adept chances are pretty good, but he's gotta stop stacking up with the Bailey's coming in like this. I mean, Drago's getting some nice damage on top of this as he trades out for mostly Lings. A couple of drones uh, died, he but... He has to worry about his third base now, though. That was all of his army, and Solar Cell has a lot of Lings. Ah, uh, the overcharge should be okay. Second pylon coming down to really cover that, too. Uh, he's got four <laughs> spells on top of this. I'm surprised he doesn't try and save that second pylon, to be honest. Yeah, uh, this is still... There's some more Lings on the way. Like, if he really wanted, yeah, they'd definitely get a pylon. I guess the Bailings would just bust it. There'd be no defense. Yeah. Uh, Warpins are, all, are finally coming through again, so maybe just waiting for that. Alright, some links do slip by on top of this. That pylon had racked up quite the few kills before this actually got cleaned up. So Jargo takes a pretty good defensive fight. Because that was like, what, 25, 30 something army supply to the, like nothing, and now Solar's the one with no army supply, so this works out better for Jargo at the end of the day. But barely. Yeah, I think so. I really thought the third base was going to go down completely, so the fact that he saves it, doesn't really lose any probes for it, that's pretty good. A solar, I mean, I think that was just, um, he was making lings here and there, defending against the adepts, was making a couple more lings. Like, that was just an opportune time, like, not an all-in, right? He still has almost 60 drones, but the spire could be a really risky maneuver. Uh, Drogo's gateways will finish up before the spire's done, and maybe he pushes with those. And that would be something that solar would have a very tough time holding against with only lings and a handful of banelings. Because, of course, he'd want to be saving a lot of gas for those mutas. Well, the Muta Swap could catch him off guard. We've talked about it several times in the previous PvZ, and it's something that just might happen here. A lot of emphasis going into Immortals and Sentries, and I guess technically Sentries shoot up, but let's be honest, who cares? <laughs> right? This is going to be really close. The attack might even happen as the Mutas pop out, and that still might favor Drogo, who can warp in Blink Stalkers to what is a slowly increasing Muta count. That's only if Drogo pushes at this exact time, like with everything lining up, because that spire is just about done. And if he has to, if he meets those mutas at his home, then I think it's too late to push. Uh, you know what? People are giving me crap about saying, where's Fury Dragon to cast, right? Fury Dragon has muted himself more in the couple of times he's been on base trade TV than me in the entire time I've been on base trade TV, okay? Yeah, like, like percentage wise, Fury Dragon's way up there. <laughs> Fury, Dragon, Fury Dragon is like a million times worse so don't if you're gonna ask for somebody else beg for like nathaniel's or something at least guys come on i never meet myself you never stream either <laughs> well i'm just saying my percentage is clear you know oh that's like our our win loss record for fighting each other in best ofs then like i'm a god when it comes to our show matches in comparison i just saying i probably stream as much as fear dragon has so far and all the times that your computer's broke disagree but Anyways, not important right now. Bailey's crashing into the last little bit of Drogo's army. He's surrounded by drones. Mutalists pick him off. And unfortunately for him, this is going to be the end of his army. Yeah, without the Warpers and Warp and more Stalkers and nothing else that shoots up, this is going to eventually be like a snowball effect. But Drogo, he could start warping him back at home and just try and play a he macro game. I think he also He's actually still trying to push. Yeah, the stalker count bringing this to the front lines is actually not too bad. If the mutas are just fighting alone, of course, they'll go terribly. But with Ling's support and possibly Hydra's underneath it, should still go in the favor of Solar. I understand why Drogo wouldn't tap out here. I mean, he does have a big enough army supply that it doesn't look too bad. But this is something where the mutas don't even have to fight. They could literally just go around this and go to the main, kill the probes. That would initiate a base trade, which maybe Solar isn't totally prepared for yet. I mean, his meat account is getting to that point where it's like, okay, if you base, you're probably going to win. Once it gets to like 25, I think, without Phoenixes, um, they just kind of just kind of win. But only at 16 right now, getting plus 19, getting plus 1. And kudos to Drogo for not just like, well, basically tapping out, first of all, but also just turtling back at home. This is a very scary situation. 
Yeah. I like that Solar's not just diving into this either. It, it looks really tempting uh, with your mid account being as high as it is, but there's actually, between a couple of Guardian Shields and the Stalkers at hand, enough to take on the Mutas. But again, like so much of this isn't just about the Mutas, it's about the Banelings and the Lings underneath that. But as he moves up the ramp, Force Fields might come down behind him. Means mm, the links and the Banelings are not an issue, and now he can focus on the Mutas. He's got about 10 seconds to do precisely that. A couple of the Mutas get picked off. Solar could go across the map right now to initiate a base oh, trade. The oh, gosh, the Overlords, yeah. But he stays home. He patiently waits for the Force Fields to end. Force Fields are out of juice. Sentries are gone. Mutas coming back for that killing blow. And this is, once again, the end of Drogo's army. Kills a lot of drones for it this time. 20 workers die, but it takes him a long time to bank up that many stalkers. I don't know he's going to do it successfully again. Uh, I don't think so. It's just kind of the snowball that I was talking about, and the Muta is now at 19, now you know going over that 20. I think that could just be it. Drogo still mining off of at least two bases fairly well, but with just, without a real response, without Phoenix is following those Mutas. At worst, this is going to end up in a base trade, which Solar would still win. By third base. So much for that mining. Yeah, Sokka's trying to blink over on this side, but it's not going to cut it. Lings underneath this aren't meant to really do that much damage, but just soak the hits. So he's focused firing down the mutas instead, which is really nice. Picks off a couple more, but... Uh, uh. Yeah. I mean, this sucks because, again, I think in both these games, Drago kind of opened up strong and then fell short towards the fight at the end. And I'm not quite sure what's catching him so off guard with this. And I mean, okay, I'm going to be wrong about my predictions. I don't really care about that. I'm still cheering and rooting for Jogo. But GG gets called and Solar will take game number two. A very nice 2-0 lead now in the winner's match. But if Jogo loses this, he goes on a fight against Sword of Afterwards in another PvZ. Might be a bit more manageable. I don't know. But uh, either way, it's a best of five and not over yet. So sit tight, guys. Game number three when we return. All right, guys, we're back. We're in the lobby for Frost, and we're currently just waiting on Drogo and Solar to ready up for us. Uh, hopefully not going to wait too long. Mm, nope. Go. Both single nope. go. Of course, Frost doesn't have an interest, so we'll just hop into it. But uh, what are your thoughts so far on Frost and King's Age? Uh, we've obviously seen one a lot more than the other, but... Nice I don't know things. what's up with the vetoes with King Sejong. I thought it was a fine map, but... Apparently a lot of our Protoss and Zerg don't like it. He's a perfectly fine Emperor. I don't know why he's behaving like this. <laughs> okay. Base TV, are we going to get any sound for this game? No, you actually have to subscribe to the channel for sounds, for those who don't know. So, unfortunately, um, if you're not subscribed, you probably can't hear this message. It's the, it's the sound wall that they put in. <laughs> God, that would be the scummiest move ever. Like, you can watch the video, but you can't hear anything unless you subscribe to the channel. Yeah, but that might also get you, like, hundreds of dollars. No. You don't know. You don't know. What I do know is that I'd love to have a circling pool party, and I'm glad that we have one for 11 months. Thank you for coming back for another sub. In the bottom left side, he leads 2-0 and is on the verge of winning his group. Ladies and gentlemen, the yellow Zerg player from Korea, Solar. In the bottom right, as the red Protoss, he is Drogo. What are you giggling about? Just just the whole mute situation. <clears throat> I mean, I triple checked getting into this game. We're good. And, and, all, and all the praise for never self muting. <laughs> Do you wanna? Do you wanna have to cast and observe more? Like this is this is how you cast and observe more. <laughs> I figure in a week your computer is actually just going to break. It's perfectly fine. I don't know if you noticed. I've been doing 1080 for the last couple days too. Not even 720. I know. I don't know about perfectly fine though. We've had a lot of technical problems. I am fairly confident that none of those were on my end. Yeah, of course they were. The internet problem where we're dropping frames was not exactly in my control. I had nothing to do with my computer. Your sound issues were 100% limited to you and these one-on-one -on -one calls. I'm sorry, not just your computer. Your computer, internet, and weather. I think we'll all just, just, they'll just next week, they'll just all come together and then they'll just fry your computer and it'll explode. Okay, so I want to be perfectly clear. I'm not getting overly defensive about this because I really couldn't care less about whether my computer was at hand or not. <laughs> I'm, I'm more concerned with you, like, putting this bad mojo on me by saying stuff like that, man. It's bad juju. No, thank you. I would knock on wood, but my computer table's no longer wood, so... I think, I, I think that I'll be prepared, though, so that's the whole point. 
<laughs> prepared and and then I'll save the day except I'll save it for a week of solo casting which sounds great I love it yeah this sounds like the greatest way to volunteer yourself to have to solo cast a ton of shit you don't want to have to solo cast <laughs> well whatever <laughs> I have to do that when you get your wisdom teeth out your wisdom teeth okay wisdom vampire teeth right I'm not sure why you think there's this opportunity to take shots at me so much this game, but... Oh, calm down. You know, okay, I'm whatever. Sorry. I'm sorry. Really, I was taking shots at your internet, but... So Stargate comes down out of Drogo. This isn't so surprising, but the links are going to get right into the base and reveal this right away for no consequence whatsoever. It almost gets a probe yeah. for it, too. They got the scout really well on the... Um... Twilight Council in the first game, it still led to a decent macro game, but at least it ended up link busting, which is uh, could be an option here. Frost, not exactly a super great third, especially in these spawns where either one of them, if they took their third in the bottom location, could be easily abusable with that high ground. So Drogo yeah. would have to take the one to the north, which would be you know a potential surround, a potential concave. Well, the worst part about that one too is it's so far removed like you really don't want to have if you've got to keep going this way and then this way and then this way eventually you're at this point where you're like well i'm just super far away from being in two places at the same time and that's when i feel like a zerg player more than a protoss player can tear you apart it's a lot easier for zerg to split their army up than say drogo uh easier to split 40 lings than you know two immortals yeah this is the map we usually see that twilight council all in on actually so just you know getting a scout on that Stargate is nice because you have the spore crawlers and queens in position, but it's also just like you don't have to worry about getting any early game defense uh, for the most part. Again, like those Stargate all in, so don't exist for the yeah. legacy of the Void expansion. Uh, so, Oli Molly answered the question in chat, but just to reiterate here, a lot of these invites we did, guys, were based off qualifier performances. I know it's a little bit different than other tournaments, and StarCraft standard for a while has been like you invite the big names and you want the flashy stuff, but. We kind of clued in a while back, like, well, it would be certainly cool to have somebody with a big name play in our tournaments. We like highlighting the people who don't normally get that recognition, and we don't need them to get the viewership that we do. Like, again, wonderfully appreciating the 2,000 plus some odd people tuning in to Solar versus Drogo, or, or any of the other matchups we get, but I'm a lot less worried about getting 3,000 versus 5,000 viewers as long as we all have a good time. And, of course, again, rewards the people consistently playing our things. If you're constantly playing Corsair Cups, the Ting Open Qualifiers, we're far more likely to invite you back to one of the invite spots. Mm -hmm. The Queens marching across the middle of the map is very interesting. I did not expect a Ling Roach, well, a Ling Ravager, a couple of Roaches, and Queen all in as Solar's he, choice here. He might just be trying to end this because he thinks like I'm up 2-0 and the defenses have been kind of wonky so far. But this is actually a game I feel really good for Drogo in. He's got the pylons. His gateways are sure just only just now finishing up. But oh no, he's going to eat the Curse of Bile. Loses all the sentries. No more force field. So forget everything I said. I just cast the Curse of the shit out of him. Mothership Core is going to go down next. Curse of Bile just sitting there. He's just eating them all. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh, even well, the Oracle flies into one too. Oh, that's... That's gotta be game. I, I don't even I'm know what to lucky. say about that. That was just... Those are three cursive piles good. that shouldn't have hit anything, but hit everything. And with the Ling reinforcements flooding in, I don't know how Drogo's going to hold. Pylons don't matter because of a Mothership core. There'd only be one overcharge with this new one anyway. And the Robo is going to get denied now, so no Immortals for you either. He's desperately Drogo, trying to get more pylons down. He's desperately trying to get anything to fight with, but he just is nice. E That's unfortunate. But Solar will make it first out of the group 3-0. And move uh, on to the round of 16. That was a 3 0. Wow. So, I don't know. Drogo won one. For those who don't know, the wild card group, as it currently stands, has only Snoot invited into it. Now, Solar moving on to the group with him. I'm hoping it won't be too Zerg heavy, but the next wild card qualifier is going to have what I imagine is Beyond first place, so that'll be a nice shakeup. But. I really want to emphasize, or really want to emphasize, as I learned to speak, this next matchup actually doesn't send either Drogo or, sort of, directly to the round of 16. They'll play one more, sort of, second place finalist match at a later date, but this will determine which of them even gets a chance to play. So, if you haven't read our Team Liquid thread, make sure to check it out. You'll see all the details on the event 
as well as these weird small tweaks and changes. But uh, we're going to go to a break. A word from our sponsors this time around while we get the final vetoes set up. We'll go back to Europe for this, though, because it will be Sort of versus Drogo playing for the first time today. So thank you guys for watching. Don't go anywhere. And here's some words from Kyra. If you're running out of space for photos on your phone, this is the app for you. I'm Kyra, and this is the Ting Download. Google Photos solves your space issues, pushing every photo you take into the cloud so you can free up storage on your phone. It does a lot more than just store your photos, though. It also curates, edits, creates little slideshows of your travels, and more. Take some pictures and let Google Photos work its magic. You can easily create albums to organize your photos and make collaborative shared albums that can be viewed and updated by family and friends. You can also find your photos by visiting photos.google.com or by signing into the Google Photos app on another phone or tablet. Google sorts and categorizes your photos using its intelligent search tool. It scans everything it sees and groups photos by people, places, and things. It's slightly creepy, sure, but it's also super handy. You can get specific with the search bar and still find relevant results. You'll be surprised what Google's image recognition and your searches will turn up. The Assistant tab is where you'll find edits and presentations of your photos, created by Google just for you. Discover collages, stories, animated GIFs, and more. Some are wonderful, some are weird, and it's definitely worth a look. Google Photos is free. It offers unlimited high-quality storage, and you can upload all your old photos and albums too. Grab the app on Google Play and the App Store. Links are in the description below. Like, subscribe, comment. You know the drill. Thanks for watching.